My name is Sir Felix O. Gonzalez, KGOR of the Order of the Knights of Rizal, Central USA, Malaya Chapter in Chicago, Illinois, USA. I'm going to discuss with you today about Dr. Jose Rizal in America. Dr. Jose Rizal arrived in San Francisco on the steamer Belgic on April 28, 1888. The ship was carrying 643 Chinese coolies, rumored to be displacing white laborers on railroad constructions. The first class passengers were permitted to land after a week. Dr. Jose Rizal, as we know, is a first class passenger and was permitted to go ashore on May 4, 1888. While in San Francisco, he registered at the Palace Hotel. You know, he paid $4 a day, including bath and everything. This hotel is located in Stockton Street, 312. Currently, it's still in San Francisco in this address, 2 Montgomery Street, San Francisco, California. Dr. Serzal saw the Golden Gate Park. We have to remember that Golden Gate Bridge was not there yet. The stores on Sundays, as he noted in his uh, diary, said like they were closed. The best street in San Francisco is Market Street. He stayed in San Francisco from May 4 to May 6, 1888. He left San Francisco at 4.30 in the afternoon and took a ferry across the bay in Oakland and ate supper in Sacramento for 75 cents. He boarded the train Union Pacific and slept in the coach. The train route and train companies that Rizal took in America. From San Francisco, it was the Union Pacific to Denver, Colorado that he took up to Omaha, Nebraska. Then he had breakfast in Reno and he saw a Native American Indian attired in a semi-European suit. Reno is a desert, unpopulated and lonely place, as he said. It was warm and there was still snow on top of the mountains. On May 8, which is Tuesday, 1888, he arrived in the state of Utah as the third state that Dr. Rizal, Rizal passed. He stopped near Ogden in Utah. From Ogden, Utah, they changed train to Denver, Colorado. The clock was set ahead by one hour of time. He saw three Mormon boys in Farmington, Utah, women serve at the table. It's kind of like unusual for Dr. Sarasal such a, a thing because in the Philippines at that time, women don't serve in restaurants. Dr. Rizal took the Chicago Northwestern train to Chicago. On May 9, 1888, he passed through the mountains and rocks along a river. At 10.30 a.m., the train reached a certain height and it was, and this is why snow is still seen along the way. Colorado has more trees than the three states that he passed over. He said there were many horses. On May 10, 1888, which is a Thursday, he woke up near Nebraska. The country is plain. Reach Omaha, the big city, the biggest since he left, San Francisco. He said that the Missouri River was twice as wide as the Pasig River, as the widest part, as noted by Dr. Fisarizal. The train passed over the Missouri River Bridge for two and a half minutes. He is now in Illinois. On May 11, 1888, which is a Friday, he woke up near Chicago. He never mentioned about the Mississippi River, as everybody knows, like being one of the longest river in the United States, because at that time, they were sleeping. He said in Illinois, the country is cultivated, and Dr. Rizal arrived in Chicago via the Chicago Northwestern train at the Chicago Central Station at the end of Grand Park near Roosevelt and Michigan Avenue. Most likely that the result was on the Overland Flyer or Overland Limited and the San Francisco Overland. This San Francisco train debuted in 1887. This is a, a first class train. 
In Chicago, Dr. Rizal observed that every cigar store has an Indian figure and always different from each other. He said he left Chicago at 8.14 in the evening, that was on Friday, and he could have taken the train from Chicago to Detroit or Sarnia, Ontario in Canada on the Grand Trunk Line. On May 12, 1888, which is a Saturday, he was on a good Wagner train a car. He said the country is beautiful and was well populated. The Grand Trunk train he took from Chicago to Niagara Falls. He said he arrived in the English territory of Canada in the afternoon of May 12, 1888. Dr. Rizal saw the Niagara Falls. He said we left the place at night. Dr. Rizal might have boarded the New York Central Railroad from Niagara Falls to New York City. On May 13, 1888, which is a Sunday, he said he woke up near Albany, New York. The Hudson River, which runs along, carries many boats. We crossed the bridge. The landscape is beautiful. And the train arrived in New York Central Station on 89 East 42nd Street, New York, New York. And he said the grand transcontinental trip ended on Sunday, May 13, 1888 at 11.10 in the morning. Rizal, or Dr. Rizal, stayed at the Fifth Avenue Hotel at 500 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. 10010 is the zip code. While Dr. Rizal, Rizal is in New York, Rizal visited the scenic and historic places. Dr. Rizal visited the George Washington Memorial in New York. On May 16, Dr. Rizal left New York City for Liverpool on board the city of Rome. According to, to Dr. Rizal, this ship was the second largest ship in the world belonging to the Great Eastern. This presentation is a summary of Dr. Rizal Rizal's travels in America from April 28 to May 16, 1888. If you would like more information about Dr. Rezerzal's travels, writings, and his life, please visit the Knights of Rizal Malaya Chapters website at knightsofrizal.org. Non omnis moriar, not everything in me will die. This is Sir Felix O. Gonzalez, KGOR. Thank you. Saturday, April 28, 1888. We arrived at San Francisco in the morning. We anchored. It is said that we shall be quarantined. The custom house boat visited us. Its flag has this look. The sacks or bags of silk were taken away. A sack costing $700. They are not afraid of the silk and they were to take their breakfast on board. Sunday, April 29th. Second day of the quarantine. We are greatly troubled and impatient aboard. I have not eaten. It gets on my nerve. Monday, April 30th. The quarantine is continued. I read in the paper a statement of the sanitary doctor against quarantine. Tuesday, May 1st. The quarantine is continued. We signed a petition against the quarantine. And the Englishman wrote to the consul. Thursday, May 3rd. Six days of quarantine. Friday, May 4th, at 3 p.m. The quarantine is ended. I stayed at the Paris Hotel, $4 a day with bath and everything. Stockton Street, 312. I saw the Golden Gate. The Customs House. A letter of recommendation. On Sunday stores were closed. 
The best street in San Francisco is Market Street. I took a walk. Stanford, the rich man. A street near Chinatown. We left San Francisco on Sunday, the 6th, at 4.30 p.m. Sailed to Oakland. Railroad. Onward from Port Costa to Benicia. Plantations. Herds of cattle. No herdsmen. Stores at the camp. Dinner at Sacramento, 75 cents. We slept in the coach. Regular night. We woke up an hour from Reno, where we took our breakfast at 7.30 of Monday, May 7. I saw an Indian attired in semi-European suit, and semi-Indian suit, leaning against a wall. Why deserts without plants nor trees? Unpopulated. Lonely place. Bare mountains. Sands. A big extension of white land, like chalk. Far from this desert can be seen some blue mountains. It was a fine day. It was warm, and there was still snow on the top of some mountains. Tuesday, May 8th. This is a beautiful morning. We stop from place to place. We are near Ogden. I believe with a good system of irrigation this place could be cultivated. We are at Utah State, the third state we crossed over. In approaching Ogden, the fields are seen with horses, oxen, and trees. Some small houses are seen from a distance. From Ogden to Denver. The clock is set one hour ahead of time. We are now beginning to see flowers with yellow color on the way. The mountains at a distance are covered with snow. The banks of Salt Lake are more beautiful than other things we saw. The mules are very big. There are mountains in the middle of the lake like the islands of Tallinn in Laguna de Bay. We saw three Mormon boys at Farmington. There were sheep, cows and horses in the meadows. This region is not thickly populated. A flock of ducks in the lake. There were beautiful houses with trees, straight streets, flowers, low houses. Children greeted us at Salt Lake City. In Utah, the women serve at the table. It is known that dinner will be cheap. We change train at Ogden, and we will not have any change until Denver. In Provo I ate much for 75 cents. We are passing between two mountains through a narrow channel. Wednesday. May 9th. We are passing through the mountains of rocks along a river. The river is noisy and its noise gives life to the lifeless scenery. We woke up at Colorado, the fourth state we crossed over. At 10.30 we climb up a certain height, and this is why snow is seen along the way. There were many pines. The snow on the mountain top is white and shiny. We pass through tunnels made of wood, to protect the road against snow. Icicles in these tunnels are very bright which gives majestic effect. The porter of the Pullman car, in American, is a sort of thief. Colorado has more trees than the three states we passed over. There are many horses. Thursday, May 10. We woke up at Nebraska. The country is plain. We reached Omaha, a big city at 4 p.m. The biggest sense we left in San Francisco. The Missouri River is twice as wide as the Pasig River in its wide part. It is marshy. Islands are formed in the middle of the river. Its banks are not beautiful. This region has many horses and cattle. The train passed over the Missouri Bridge for two and a half minutes. The train goes slowly. We are now in Illinois. Friday, May 11. We wake up near Chicago. The country is cultivated. It shows our nearness to Chicago. We left Chicago at 8.20 Friday night. What I observed in Chicago is that every cigar store has an Indian figure, and always different. Saturday, May 12th. A good Wagner car, we are proceeding in a fine day. The country is beautiful and well populated. We shall arrive at the English territory in the afternoon, and we shall soon see Niagara Falls. We stop for some time to see the points that are beautiful. We went at the side below the falls. I was between two rocks and this is the greatest cascade I ever saw. It is not so beautiful nor so fine as the fall at Los Banos. But much bigger, more imposing and could not be compared with it. The cascade has various falls, various parts. We left the place at night. There is a mysterious sound and persistent echo. Sunday, May 13th. We wake up near Albany. This is a big city. The Hudson River which runs along carries many boats. 
we crossed over a bridge. The landscape is beautiful and it is not inferior to the best in Europe. We are going along the banks of the Hudson. They are very beautiful, although a little more solitary than those of the Pasig. There were ships, boats, trees, hills. And the major part is cultivated. The Hudson is wide. Beautiful ships. Sliced granite rocks were paved along the railroads. Some points widely extended. There were beautiful houses between trees. Day fine. Our Grand Transcontinental trip ended on Sunday, May 13th, at 11.10 a.m. We passed through various arches and tunnels. We left New York on May 16, 1888. There were many people at the dock. The first and second class entrances are separated. At 9 o'clock sharp, the bell rang to warn the visitors away. At 9.30, the pier was full of people. White handkerchiefs were waved. Ribbons and flowers of different colors are seen here and there. I visited the largest cities of America with their big buildings, electric lights, and magnificent conceptions. Undoubtedly America is a great country, but it still has many defects. There is no real civil liberty. In some states a Negro cannot marry a white woman, nor can a Negress marry a white man. Because of the hatred of the Chinese, other Asiatics, like the Japanese, being confused with them, are likewise disliked by the ignorant Americans. These customs are excessively strict. However, as they say rightly, America offers a home to the poor who like to work 